This video is going to be about this Tektronix TDS 320. Originally when I brought this scope I had no intentions of repairing it. I just needed a few buttons by the CRT that were missing from another scope that I'm working on that happened to use the same buttons. I didn't want it cheap so I figured I'd go and take parts from it to use for another scope. Well I decided to go ahead and see. Well let me see what's wrong with it to begin with because it didn't power on. And let me go and show you the condition this thing was in before I serviced it. You can see there, and there's a nice view of the inside. You can see years and years caked the dust, never been blown out or anything. It was in pretty bad shape. So let me go ahead and get the camera set down, and I'll show you what it looks like now. So here's what it looks like after I went ahead and took it outside to the air compressor, which I do have a dryer installed on it, so that way moisture and water don't get onto the board as you're spraying it clean pretty much of air. And it came out pretty nice actually. And then as far as the front panel go and stuff, I just went ahead and used detergent, soap, water, let it sit in there for a while. And I went ahead and was able to move the adhesive, the whiting, everything on it. It came out pretty nice for what it was. Now originally the pop, um, problem with this thing was it would not power on. And of course my first attention was to the rear fuse. Check that. That checked out good. Then after I checked out the fuse, I went ahead and decided let me go and remove the power supply and check the power supply out. In order to remove the power supply, you do have to remove those two screws there and the nut for that grounding right there. So I went and removed it, I slide it forward, took it out, checked the bridge rectifier, I went ahead and also checked the diodes and the regulators, then I went ahead and checked all the capacitors for any shorts or anything like that. And everything checked out good and I also checked cold solder joints, anything that looks suspect. Then I went ahead and put it on power, saw that I was getting standby voltage and saw that the power supply indeed should work. So after that I turned my attention, originally I was going to turn my attention to the main board. But knowing these TDS scopes, I know how some people try to take the front panel out and they usually break the cable right here because they try to remove this force, the button assembly and stuff and some of them have a frame where you can move it and slide it out either try and do an LCD mod or whatever to it and they always break that connector well this is a different scope it just has it taped right onto the frame and stuff but some of them have the frame with the lens assembly that's actually screwed on there and I know how people break that ribbon cable right there so I figure I'll go ahead and turn my attention to that so let me go ahead and show you exactly what the problem was so after checking you know the power supply and seeing that's pretty much good before getting to the motherboard I say you know something let me go and remove the front panel and check the contact strip right here because I know sometimes people on some of the other scopes where they have the lens and they have this over the lens they'll try to remove it and they'll end up breaking this flex cable that's in here which plugs in behind this board right here because they don't know that that plugs into the board right there so I went ahead and checked on it, seeing that it was mounted on the frame, I'm like, well, probably no one pulled that out because it doesn't look like it was touched and it looks pretty clean. None of the carbon tracks and stuff like that are damaged or anything like that. I went ahead and removed the front panel. Now on the other scope that does have the lens that has the cable, all you have to do is just push this right out and it comes right out. On this particular scope, there's a clip right here that you have to push down and I'll go and push it down. And then it pops out like that, and then it slides onto these hooks, and then you can go and move it out. And the cable is just plugged into the back of this board right here. So I'm going to go and put that in and clip it right back in. So the next thing was to do, I have the test one right here that's a broken one, but I use it for testing. I decide, let me go ahead and see that, and sure enough, it powered right up. And I'll go ahead and show you that it powers up, but while we're doing I'll show you what the problem was. And the problem was, was... Dust got caked in so much into this, this was not making good contact with that contact strip right there. And that's what was causing the problem. There was nothing wrong with this scope. And there you go. And that was the problem. It was just so dirty. That's the reason why the scope did not power on. So I'm going to go and get this all the way back together. And I'll show you that it does work 100%. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that the scope does turn on and it doesn't have any other issues. Here you go, I'll go and power it on. 
And I went ahead and did all the self tests. Then I also did SBC and it passed everything. And also checked both channels and they both work properly. So there really is no other issues with the scope. And I tested the capacitors and the power supply and the ESRs were good. So there's nothing wrong with it. And you can see there it passed the self test. So we'll go ahead and clear that. And then we'll go ahead and go into utilities. And then we'll go here. And I'll show you that it did pass SBC. And you can see everything passed when I went ahead and ran it. There's no errors either. So that's the good thing. And there you go. I got a signal in it. I got an 800 kilohertz signal. And we'll go ahead and do channel 2 now. So I'll turn this off. We'll go channel 2. We'll put this in channel 2. We'll go and go to channel 2 trigger. Okay, clear it, and then we'll go to measure, so that way I can show you that also works too. Frequency. There you go, and they're pretty much within spec to each other. And there you go. The only thing I don't like about the scope is the fact that it doesn't have a 50 ohm termination on it, but it is a cheaper scope. The scope would be good for someone that's doing audio work or anything like that that don't need high performance. So it's a pretty decent scope and I'm not going to be parting it out of course now. I'm going to go ahead and find someone that actually needs it pretty much. So here you go. It shows that it does work now.